Hey guys, Rick Gamer 34 here. Today, I have something cool to show you. I built a CPU. I don't want to give away what it looks like at the moment. Um, that can run multiplication. So all it has in it is an adder, some registers. It's got RAM access. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and multiply some numbers. You'll see we have user input one and user input two. We put the larger number in user input one, so it has to do less cycles. So let's go ahead and put five here and three here. We'll go ahead and enable the clock and start it. So that means it's going to add five three times and then give us the result. So right now what it's doing is it's running through these commands. So line zero is nothing because line zero is always going to be on unless... yeah. Um, line one defines A so it's polling for your user input that you, that you put in there. Line 2 defines B. It pulls for the second input. Uh, line 3 defines a constant, which is actually just a number 1, so it can do subtraction. Number 4, line 4, it does B minus 1, and it checks for if 0. If it's not true, it'll go to the next line, where it just moves D back to B. Then it does A plus A is stored to C. C is then moved to A. And then it jumps back to line 4. So it just did addition. Then it subtracts again. If 0 is true, it'll jump to line 9 and display what we got for an answer. Then go to line 10, display answer, and jump back to line 9. So as you see, our um, program is almost finished. You'll notice it'll jump. See, it just got a 0 when it did subtraction on line 4. It jumped to line 9, and now it's jumping back and forth from line 9 to line 10, and it got 15 because 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is 15. So 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, so let's throw some bigger numbers at it. Um, how about we do 7 times 7. That's going to take 7 cycles to do. What the heck, what the heck. Oops, I thought I disabled all that. Okay. So I have 7 times 7 in. I'm just going to go and reset the registers. So you know that this isn't predetermined answers. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now as it's running, I'm going to explain to you what's going on. Down here is our program memory. As you can see, it's switching from line to line. Like that. Um, here's our immediates. The immediate can either be treated as a RAM address or as an immediate, depending if you're using RAM or not. Here's where we pull for user inputs 1 and 2. Um, this is read word from RAM. Here's write word to RAM. Here's uh, A and B inputs, and here's our write address. Here's our ALU ops, and actually for ALU ops, I couldn't think of much. So, subtraction, or, NAND, XOR, XNOR, invert A, just in case you need to invert one number, and shift down. Um, and here's where the instruction set kind of gets big, because other than that, it's a pretty small instruction set. Uh, we have an unconditional jump line. And then we have a conditional jump line. So if we test for one of these conditions, which are carry out if zero, uh, carry out if zero, A is greater than B, A equals B, B is greater than A, we're testing for those and they're true, then it'll use the conditional jump, which will not allow anything in the unconditional jump to work. Only what's in here. That's only if we're testing for it, though. If we're not, we'll just use the unconditional jump to tell us where to go. So you'll see in here, we have programmed an unconditional jump right here. So no matter what, go there. Go to line 4. And then we have our conditional jump, which we're testing for F0. if 0. If 0 is true, it'll 
uh, jump to line 9. So that's how that works. Now, how the CPU in a whole works is I'm actually using Neural Master's uh, CLE design, and I don't know why that box there. Um, MP Zones uh, inverters on them. Uh, I put my OR line to here, modified that. I have a downshifter on it right here. Uh, they go into a set of registers. And then the output of the ALU also goes into this RAM. Now, how this RAM is addressed is I only have 15 bytes of it, so it only has a 4-bit address going in. Um, here's the 4 bits. 4 bits can either act as read or write, depending on what uh, you're calling for in the instruction set. And then you could write and read to RAM. And that loads back through uh, to A. And that's basically the data loop. I also have some busing here to uh, bring it down and around. Oh, and it looks like our result is done. We did 7 times 7. It's flashing back and forth between 9, 9 and 9, 10. And 7 times 7 is 49. So we have 32 plus 16, which is 48, plus 1 is 49. So that worked nicely. Um, I'm just going to jump to line 0, like so. And let's do a number, we'll do 15 times 15, which is this. That uh, That's what we'll, 15 times 15 will get us, and that's the largest multiplication we could do. Actually, I guess we could do 15 times 1. And I'll just add 1 15 times, but that's dumb. Let's enable clock. And I'm just going to sit here. Alright, so as you guys can see, we got, uh, it's flashing between lines 9 and lines 10, and we got a result of 255, um, because 128 plus 64 plus 32 is 1, is 224, and then there's the 1, so 225. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.